August looks like yet another bumper month for new indie games coming to PC and consoles in what's been an amazing year for new indie games. Hey everybody, today on Get Indie Gaming, 10 new indie games out this August we think you'll want to see more from. At number 10, and in no real particular order, let's get things going with Recompile. This is a game I've had on my watch list now for a few years. It was originally scheduled to come out last year, and like many others, it slipped into 2021, with it all ready to launch this coming August the 19th. It's been through a few iterations over the years, and yet one thing that hasn't changed over time is how the game grabs you with its visuals. It's just so wonderfully striking with its vivacious colours. As for the gameplay, this one's essentially an action platformer with Metroidvania elements and physics-based hacking mechanics. I last got to play this all the way back at Gamescom in 2019 and found it a stern but just about manageable challenge, particularly within the sections of combat which I found intense, difficult but ultimately highly satisfying. Until recently I didn't know Recompile comes with a branching storyline where the decisions you take in-game impact upon the ending, of which there are multiple versions which should help with replayability. Recompile will be available on PC, PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X and S, with it also out on day one via the Microsoft Game Pass. In a year where we've seen a decent stack of new and classic re-released skating games, I wanted to take the opportunity to shine a quick light on something out this August you might not have seen. The ramp comes from a single developer, and it's designed, as the developer says, to scratch a very specific itch. A skating game that's relatively simple with no moves to unlock, no vast area to explore, and no online leaderboards. This might just be the cool as a cucumber skating game we never know we all needed, with it coming out via Steam on August the 3rd. Next up at number 8, something perhaps more likely to cause a little spike in heart rate and blood pressure, Dodgeball Academia is an action RPG, presumably focused on remembering the 5 Ds of dodgeball with you needing to dodge, duck, dip, dive and dodge all the way around the dodgeball themed schooling environment. You play as Otto, a newbie student at the academy with you needing to skill up and fight your way to become top of the class. From the looks of things, this one will use RPG elements and real-time combat, with moments in between where you look free to roam around the campus and engage with NPCs. Aside from what looks like 3v3 battles, there are hints of boss battles and other modes within main quests of multiple episodes, with it also featuring mini-quests and smaller sub-games. This all looks pretty cool and somewhat different, with it launching on PC, the Switch, PlayStation and Xbox on August the 5th. Next up at number 7 and out on August the 24th, Hoa is another stunner with its beautiful hand-painted art style, together with what feels like a peaceful and relaxing puzzle platformer. I first saw this shown off within the recent Wholesome Direct showcase, one of the spin-off virtual shows from the E3 period just gone. If you haven't seen my wrap-up video of this year's E3, you can find a link down in the description or in some browsers via the card that's on screen right now. What else can we say about Hoya? Well, the most obvious is that it looks like something straight out of Studio Ghibli, something like an interactive cartoon, where we're expecting the puzzle sections to be based upon exploration and interaction with aspects of the environment. While originally slated to come to PC and the Switch, I understand Hoa will now be coming to both the Xbox and PlayStation platforms, with it quite possibly being one of the finest looking and most relaxing games of its kind we've seen in ages. Onwards and from one distinctively looking and beautiful game, right over to something else that's just as beautiful and just as distinctive. Book of Travels comes out in early access on August the 30th and has been dubbed by the developers as a tiny multiplayer online RPG. So what does that really mean? Well, by all accounts, the developers are looking to offer up a new take on the classic MMO. The idea here is apparently for players to make their way and explore within a sparsely populated world called the Braided Shore that has villages, open countryside, rolling plains, rivers, mountains, ruins and much more. 
Players will control their own traveler with the MMO aspect here designed for players to what's called share moments of wonder to lend each other strength while also giving folks a thirst for danger. As evidence from the footage in this trailer shows, there's clearly elements of combat and communication between the players seems to take the form of emotes and icons. It's clearly an ambitious project, not just in the scope of its aims, but how all the systems will interlink together. I'm quietly confident Book of Travels might become something, if not at launch, then over time, that's pretty darn special. Book of Travels will be available via Steam. Welcome to Petria. Into the top five we go with Road 96, and on paper and screen at least, something we don't tend to see too much from. This is looking to deliver a story-driven action-adventure game, with everything being driven on the fly by way of procedural generation. Taking the cues from such films by Tarantino and the Coen brothers, and is set in 1996, with you looking to make a journey of thousands of miles across an authoritarian nation by hitchhiking your way, hopefully over the border. Like Book of Travels, this feels highly ambitious, although I am really hoping the team behind it have been able to build something that freely flows and isn't a hodgepodge of loosely interconnected scenes. Either way, I don't have too long to find out about this one with Road 96 coming out towards the middle of the month via Steam and GOG with it also headed off to Switch. If you fancy a quick try before you buy, there's a demo you can pick up from the game's Steam homepage and as always, you can find a link to this and all of the games featured in this video down there in the description. At number 4, and something we haven't seen too many people talking about, which having spent time playing with the demo on more than a few occasions of late, this feels a shame. Please don't sleep on this one, as it's something that might turn out to be one of the unsung hidden gems of the entire year. 2D and Top D is a top-down platforming puzzler that uses a unique mechanic. You control both of the titular characters, whereby switching between the two of them, the perspective changes which in turn upends the rules and mechanics of the game in play. It's something that feels reasonably hard to accurately describe, though the footage that's on screen, well it should do a better job in visually spelling things out. In any case, the game and its gameplay feels really fresh and well, just really different. It's not just a puzzling platformer though. There are also boss battles, the option of a local co-op mode which gets a high five from the team here as does the inclusion of difficulty settings where you're able to change up the game's rules to better suit how you fancy playing it. 2D and Top D comes to PC via Steam on August the 4th, and honestly, is hoping there's a Switch port at some point in the very soon future. At number 3, and set in pre-revolutionary Paris, Ambition, the Minuet and Power is a fascinating looking visual novel with elements of strategy, adventure and dating sim all interweaved within it. Playing, I think, as one of the Aristos, you'll be able to attend the court of King Louis XVI, the gilded halls of the Paris of Versailles, as you weave your way around Parisian society while attending parties and mixing with other people of high birth. While you do party, you'll be needing to pay attention not only to your relationships with a wide range of romanceable cast of characters, but also with the various factions of Paris, with you needing to keep the crown on your side, but also the church, the military, and plenty others as well. Assuming you're able to negotiate the story as the impending revolution unfolds, then the end game might see you in the arms of your chosen partner, and if not, well, I'll assume you may end up on the wrong side of the guillotine with your head in a basket. Ambition and Minuet in Power comes out on August the 18th, with a playable demo yours to play today via its Steam homepage. So, how was your day? Oh, uh, you know. I have something to share. When is this my birthday? At number two, 12 Minutes feels best thought of as a piece of interactive theater, with it featuring the voice talents of Willem Dafoe, James McAvoy, and Daisy Ridley. Players find themselves in the shoes of a man home from work to what he's expecting to be a quiet and romantic evening at home with his wife. However, not before too long, there's a knock at the door from a man claiming to be a policeman with things and your life literally ending a few moments later on the floor of your kitchen room diner and then boom, you're back at the start of a time loop with you needing to use the knowledge of the turn of events that are yet to unfold to break the loop and save yourself and your wife. This has all the hallmarks of the suspense of The Shining, just look at that carpet in the hall, a clear nod towards that influence, 
but they're also looking towards other films such as Rear Window and Memento. I suspect this probably is a play once and you're done kind of thing, although given its overall premise, I'm hugely excited to see how all of this turns out. 12 Minutes is out on August the 19th on PC via Steam, with it also coming up launch onto the Xbox. Now this month's number one, Song of Iron. Well, doesn't it just look absolutely amazing? And what's more, most if not all of this comes from a single developer, Joe Winter. Having spent the best part of a year or so teaching myself the basics of Unity and a few other engines, I can only imagine the length of time and skill set involved here in creating this Norse-inspired side-scrolling hack and slasher. It just looks so delightfully broody, so dark and malevolent, although the combat within the melee weapons and ranged attacks also seems gritty, meaty and fluid. The backgrounds with the forests, caves and mountains are also exquisitely put together, and all this combined with a Nordic backstory and lore. I'm quite sure I'm going to enjoy picking this up when it launches on the last day of the month on the PC and Xbox. So there we go. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing with the notification bells turned on. A huge thank you to our new members. You can join for less than a dollar or your local equivalent. And in so doing, you can further support the channel as we use all the money raised to reinvest and help further grow this wonderful indie game community. Either way, many thanks for watching and we'll see you all again next time.